It was going on guys, coming again the year, so I've started probably the most weird project I did so far. So I'm currently trying to write chess for ZX Spectrum computer. So before anything else, just a few words on what the ZX Spectrum computer is. So it's a computer of 80s and it's an 8-bit personal home computer developed by Sinclair Research. And I'm using two essential tools to develop for this platform. So I'm using ZX, uh, Z ZX Basic Compiler by uh, Jose Rodriguez Rosa, also known as Boreal. It's absolutely amazing compiler. So uh, no need to write an assembly because uh, it just compiles the basic code to assembly on its own and it makes uh, running much faster as opposed to the interpreted basic that is available as the only operating system on the ZX Spectrum on its own so if you develop directly in the emulator let's say and uh, as the emulator I'm using so-called Fuse uh, which stands for Free Unix Spectrum Emulator so here is how the development process looks like so yeah so uh, I didn't write much but I really spent for about four or five hours to debug this tiny little piece of code because it's really unclear from time to time. It also the compatibility between uh, the compiler and the the particular emulator is not always like a hundred percent. And I was wondering, like, what what do they mean when they say like not hundred uh, percent Sinclair basic compatible uh, when they stated this in the document in the documentation? And then I realized what that means. So sometimes. It happens that the code gets compiled and it runs and it gives exactly the same exactly the output that I've been expecting for but uh, for some reason uh, emulator uh, is given some errors like uh, something is, is not really that great there however it works so I guess that's what they meant by saying like not the hundred percent compatibility so uh, I need to go for some hacks so let's say here I have the uh, ASCII values for pieces like uh, for white pawn, knight, rook, bishop, queen, king, and lead, land, land, like uh, lower piece, like black pieces, pawn, knight, bishop, rook, uh, queen, and king here, and then the empty space. Okay, so uh, that's kind of it. And uh, the emulator itself looks like this. So. I can just say file open and yeah, let me just show you how I compile things. So this is how I compile. So I'm just taking this source file, this source file as an argument. I'm creating the tab file using this uh, command line, or uh, using this uh, option here, specifying the output file. Okay, it gives a couple of warnings. Uh, however, if I uh, get rid of this warning within the source code. If I just uh, if I specify the types, let's say I try to specify board as bytes or as u bytes, and, but in that case uh, the emulator uh, starts giving errors. So I think it's better like compiler would be giving errors, but the emulator won't. So it's still lots of research here, and obviously having a low board uh, slows down the, the performance, and it's slow as hell uh, without this. So yeah, it's really weird, but anyway. So once we had this uh, tab file being compiled, uh, so, so this is the binary executable that can be loaded to a basic interpreter. So I guess the tab, tab stays for, st stands for tape. So it's kind of like it's from the tape. And th again, and we can now load this binary executable into, uh, into the emulator. And here we go. So what we've done so far here, so, we just printed a few lines of text, so uh, it allows to print at given coordinates, which I really love. Then I specify the raw data, so these are the, the like the board representation. So 13 stands for off board. This is 10 by 12 uh, board representation, mailbox array based board representation. Then these numbers are uh, encoding the pieces. Okay. Then I'm defining the board array. I'm reading the data. I'm, I'm looping over the board squares, reading the data directly into the board array. It loads doing like this. It's really nice. And here I, spe I, I define the ASCII pieces and then to print the board, uh, 
I just go like for rows, for cows to to get this uh, uh, to get this core coordinate just like like I uh, usually did, and I'll also I can specify the uh, coordinates to print this exactly the center of the screen. Okay, and eventually I'm replacing the piece codes uh, with this. Uh, I'm, I'm converting to, to characters, to, like to ASCII character using the CHR. So converting these numbers to uh, pieces, literally. And this is how we go. And later on, it's even possible to use so-called, let me just quickly show you this. So, yeah, so micro temp txt. Later, later it's even possible to use this uh, so-called user uh, user defined graphics so it's eight uh, eight by eight squares uh, so let me make it like so so here uh, if you if you see precisely you see like it's like pawn being drawn here so this zero stands for background one stands for foreground and this is kind of like a white pawn here so I'm Probably I will add my user defined graphics. So some something equivalent to Unicode uh, Pieces like uh, I usually do in my engines So yeah, to be honest, I have no idea how this project goes and if I ever about to complete it because uh, In basic we don't have in this singular basic in particular uh, We don't have that function calls in terms of like uh, like we can do in whatever modern programming language, like uh, defining the function, then uh, uh, sending some arguments to that function. So here it's all like we have just the list of instructions and we can manipulate the instruction pointer directly via go to, to uh, unconditionally jump to whatever line we want or go sub, which is uh, like rudimentary function definition, function definition, let's say, uh, but I have no idea how to implement recursion in this case, so probably would it be some sort of a plain uh, loop based thing uh, with, or with all the global variables like depth. And again, like uh, bearing in mind that this works as slow as hell, so you can even imagine how slow it is. Uh, even uh, so calculating even for two plies, uh, two depth ply would be as slow as hell, but that's the minimal amount of search depth that we need in order to uh, actually answer the question whether the kin has been checkmated or not so uh, if with only one ply we won't be able to do that so only two plies are available uh, uh, only two plies uh, at least two plies are needed in order to uh, detect uh, detect the checkmate so we just make the move and then uh, we search the opponent's move so if it turns out that there is no kin on the board or it has been captured and missed that it's kind of the game is over so I'm not sure how exactly am I going to be implementing this uh, well literally um, I'm using my the code of my minimalist engine called Typhish but I'm not going for encoding pieces into uh, into the integers because uh, I don't really want to get go into those uh, branching and complications with extracting uh, directions and uh, like piece color, what else? Like piece weight and all this stuff from from the single number. Uh, I just want to simplify the code because in basic it's not really that great idea to do so. So that would be just the plain data structures. Yeah, again, like it takes ages to define all of these data structures to debug them, make sure they work properly. But then, hopefully, uh, I can go for this kind of main logic, and let's see how it goes. So. Uh, if I don't give up, then I would be kind of like uh, posting some videos on uh, uh, the progress of how this engine goes. And hopefully, if it works, then one day we'll see how how this engine plays on that expectation. Well, okay, guys, this is it from my side. So thanks for watching. Until the next time, and take care.